Welcome to episode 34 of Tools in the Hall. There are some really cool new products that I've never purchased before. I bet a couple of them you've never seen before. So let's jump right in and remove the mystery about what those are. The first one is a jump box from Clore. This is the year JNC 660. This has 1700 peak amps of output power. I like these units for some reasons and I don't like them for other reasons. I like them because you get a large, lot of charges out of them. They hold their charge for a long time. They're very reliable, but the things I don't like are it's very heavy. This unit, <laughs> it takes some work to lift it up. It's a two-hander for sure. And if you notice the analog gauge on the front, right there, and the charging plug right there, these are, in my estimation, a weakness in the design. The, the gauge always breaks because the, the lens cracks, it gets pushed in. And this is, even though it's recessed here, it's kind of, the prongs are exposed and that always gets bashed in too. So when I have seen these break, I have seen those two things be the biggest failure points. If it take care of it, it's not an issue. But if this is in your shop environment, it's going to be more challenging to keep it out of harm's way just simply because the environment is what it is. Now, something you may not know about these is something that uh, a lot of people don't know. And when you get the, the literature with this, it's very tempting just to throw this away. But don't do that because in the manual is a repair service coupon. This model has one for $85. The larger models have them for $100. And what this means is if this thing breaks and it's out of warranty, you send it back with this, pay the amount that's on the coupon, and they will simply send you a new unit. And it doesn't matter why it's broken. It says right on here, use it, abuse it. Heck, run it over with a semi-truck. No problem. We'll take care of the unit. It doesn't even have to be assembled. Simply return it or all of its parts along with this coupon and your sales receipt, and they'll recondition, replace, repair, whatever they have to do for the $85 fee. And that's a one-time thing. So when you get one of these and you open up the box, don't just toss this, make sure you save that coupon. And I make sure I tell all my customers that because it is something that will bite you in the end if you're not, if you're not, um, if you're not vigilant about saving that. The next thing we have is a brand new product from Milwaukee. They have this work light that runs off of their four volt red lithium battery. It's not the REM 12, they're not the REM 18. They've used this same battery in their headlamps and some other lighting products that they have. And it's a perfectly reliable battery. They put a two year warranty on the battery and this light has a lifetime warranty on it. I took one out of the package so you can see it better. It's got a ruggedized body. It's a nice dense plastic and it's got some rubberized accent pieces on it too. So you get a good grip on it. And if you drop it, it's actually shockproof. So hopefully it'll survive the fall. It has an articulating wand, a magnet base and a hook. So you can extend the hook if you don't have a ferrous metal surface that you can attach the magnet to, and it has a charging port that's covered on the side. One of the nicer features of this is it has three buttons. One's your power button, one's your mode button, and one's your high and low button. So you can choose which mode this comes on to every time you turn it on, instead of having to cycle through the modes when you hit the button. So when you turn this on, it has an end light, and again, every light setting as a high and a low and just hit that high low switch to choose. The next mode is one side of the, of the wand. The next mode is the top side of the wand. And then the third mode is both sides of the wand. I'm very interested to see 
how well this light sells. I've never had them on the truck before because they are a new product. And lighting is really always a race to see who can, <laughs> who can corner just a little bit of the market more than the next guy. Pro grade lighting is something that I take very seriously and I won't put something on the truck unless I can back it up for some significant period of time. And if you put a lifetime warranty on a light that you make, chances are very good it'll find its way in the, in the, in the pro sector of the industry. Things like Maxion lighting that I also carry have one year warranties on them. And this is something I make sure everybody is aware of up front before they make a, a purchasing decision so that they understand what they're getting into. Because God knows on the tool truck, uh, warranty means so much. And I want to make sure that everybody is as well informed as they can be. The If there's a downside to this, it has nothing to do with the product. It's the division of Milwaukee that handles their lighting isn't as good, in my opinion, as the division of the company that handles the power tools. So if we ever have to send this in for repair, it can be a little more challenging. I actually had to tell the tell the Milwaukee rep um, at the at at the lighting division when we sent something in that it had a lifetime warranty on it because he didn't believe me. And he, <laughs> I said, "No, it does. It says a. Hey, it says it right on the package." <laughs> But also, I got that from a sales rep that I was talking to at a tool show that year. So if you don't believe me, Milwaukee, just look at your own product patching. It says right there on the top, it says limited lifetime warranty for the light and a two-year warranty for the battery. So you can buy these with confidence. If you have an issue with it, that's my problem to deal with, not yours. It just means a little extra work. And I'll be honest, too, that lately, it seems like... They, I don't know if it's just new people that they have working on the desk or what it is, but when we send stuff to them that is under warranty to their power tools division, they have asked us to provide, like when we send it in, we send it in with a hard copy receipt along with a copy of our work order ticket and we staple those together. We affix it to the tool and we send it in. And when we process it, we enter that information in their online portal and we say that we have a receipt included and we scan a copy of the receipt and we attach it to the online work order as well as the hard copy we send in. And lately what's been happening is, they I don't know if they have somebody new or what, but like we'll send it in, a week will go by and then we get an email saying that it's not covered under warranty. And when we contact them to find out why, they've said, well, because you don't have a receipt. And we said, we attached a hard copy and we attached one to the online work order. So then they tell us, well, can you send us another one? Okay. So then we email them another copy of the scanned receipt. And then another week goes by and we get another email saying that they're not going to cover it. And we ask them why they say, cause there's no receipt. <sighs> so we send them another copy and then that usually takes care of it. But they, it's, it's, I don't know what's going on with them. There's, they're a little, a little disconnected there internally, I think, but we get it done. It just takes a little vigilance on our part. It's nothing that you have to worry about as part of the service and the value that I add as a tool truck guy to you in the workplace. Um, it's, I think I tell you just so you understand. And I don't like these things to be mysterious because if it takes a little bit longer to get back, I want you to know why. And I, I don't like people living in mystery. I'm happy to tell the God's honest truth about this stuff. Um, that way, if someone from Milwaukee's watching, <laughs> which I know you're not, but if, if you were, hey, maybe take that to heart and realize that it does have an impact on us and our customers and everything else. But overall, Milwaukee's fantastic to work with. We love them a lot. They are our go-to brand for a lot of things, including some hand tools now. We got a customer who asked, I have a customer who asked me to put together a kit for him for home and he wants quarter and three eighths drive sockets and ratchets and he wanted um a deep shallow standard metric quarter and three eighths and he didn't want anything terribly expensive because he's just keeping at home for occasional use and i don't even think he does side work so it's really just for his own household stuff and he doesn't want to take his pro grade tools from work and bring them all back home with him. But he wants something that's good quality. So in an effort to find something that fit the bill, we could have gone with a lot of different brands. Channel Lock makes a fairly decent set. Um, 
Gearwrench makes an excellent master set, but they don't include pliers, and those actually have a little too much for him, for what he's looking to do. So I decided to kind of go in between, and I, I could have gotten uh, some gear wrench sets similar to this, but I wanted to try the Milwaukee ones because I do like their wrenches and, and some other hand tools that I've had experience with. So we got this 32-piece metric set, and... I think it's the only one I've got so far. I ordered the metric, the standard. I ordered some pliers, some screwdrivers, and I think that's it. Um, and he will be able to put together a really comprehensive kit with things for use at home that will handle almost everything he could want to do in the house. And I also ordered them dying to see these in real life. Once they come in, Milwaukee has a six-in-one multi-tool for uh, wire cutting and stripping. They got um, needle nose plier ends on them. And I think they're pretty similar to this combo tool that Nipex has. And I'm dying to see these side by side because I, I want to do my own comparison on those. So interested to see what Milwaukee has for those. I, I'm a fan of other power tools and, and most of their lighting. And uh, what I know of their hand tools, I like a lot. And the warranty process with hand tools is we can just take a picture of the broken tool and email them the picture and they'll send us new tools. So they get cuts down on shipping time and cost. And I think it's going to be a lot better in the long run that way too. And that way the customer can handle it or we can do it on our customer's behalf, whichever is easier. I'm happy to accommodate. I mean, we already do the service portion anyway. And that, that, again, that's part of what I do is as a value add. So it's nice that the customer has a choice. Let's say they move away and I'm no longer their tool guy, then they can still get a fairly quick and an effective warranty service because of a system like that. A bunch of different brands have these manual impact drivers. This is the kind that has a flange on the end to protect your hand. There's your striker cap and it has four long bits and four short bits. The bits go in the chuck up front. And when you hold this and hit it with a hammer, it impacts the mechanism in there to turn a frozen screw. OTC has them, Lyle has them. Uh, there's at least three or four different brands that I have access to. This is the one that was in stock at the time and the price isn't bad at all, 55 bucks for, you know, on the truck finance price, you got yourself a tool that's got a lifetime warranty. I'm a fan of the OTC products in general, and this is, this is a very good one. We've had that a lot in the past, and for some reason, this is one of these tools that, I don't, I don't know the last time I bought one, and I don't know why I, I haven't had one in stock for so long. That used to be a regular item, you know, things change over time and sometimes you just forget to reorder something and out of sight, out of mind, you don't realize you don't have it until someone asks for it. And they go, oh man, I used to have these on the truck all the time and they were good sellers. So that's why we're getting them again and putting them back on the truck. This is another item that kind of got lost by the wayside. I used to carry these these uh, filter socket sets, Lyle has them, GearWrench has them, SunX has them, a bunch of brands have them. Uh, this one is the least expensive. They all put lifetime warranties on them. So I'm gonna go with the least expensive one and GearWrench wins that battle. So the GearWrench socket set will go on the truck. This one has a 24, 27, 29, 32, 36, and 38 millimeter socket for all different oil filter canisters. And they're nice and low profile. They come in a blow molded case. Easy to keep track of, easy to carry around with you if you need to. Good quality set. I used to carry the Lyle ones a lot, but I think these are a fairly new product for GearWrench if I'm not mistaken. Before it was only the Lyle ones and they had a five piece set. This one has more pieces and I think it costs less than the Lyle set does. Oh, these suck. Siphon hoses, <laughs> they suck, get it? These are very popular. I, you saw these in my last, um, or one of my previous tool haul videos. 
very popular. I can't keep enough of these on the truck. They were on back order, gosh, I don't know, forever, I think. And they finally came back in recently, so now I'm stocking up on them. The principle is it has this ball in this copper end on, on one end of the tubing and the other end is just an open piece of tubing. Put this in the fluid you're going to siphon, put this end in the container you're gonna siphon into, and just insert this and shake it, and the movement of the ball creates the suction. Very simple, very effective. And the diesel guys particularly love these. I got some repairs that came back from Streamlight. Their lighting is ex exceedingly reliable, but if it fails on you, they do have a very good warranty process. And a lot of their lights, like the Stryon here and the larger Stinger, like this one, these are covered with a lifetime warranty. The batteries have two year warranties on them, but the light and everything in it has a lifetime. So any problems at all, we'll just send it off and get it replaced. Many times the switch caps are what fails on here. I can just switch that out on the truck, but if there's a problem with the function of the light and it's not the switch cap, we have to send them in to Streamlight for repair or replacement. And that takes time obviously because transit time and then processing on the air and transit back. The advantage I think that Coast has is they also put a lifetime warranty on their lights. This is one of their headlamps, but they have some flashlights which were made specifically to compete with the Stryon and the Stinger products from Streamlight. These guys have the advantage in processing for warranty claims. I do not have to send these in. I can hand you a new one and take a broken one and then I deal with this through my distributor. I get a credit for it and they get the old product back and it's much easier and faster for you. And any time a brand or a company can help me help you and make everyone's lives easier, they're going to get the business most of the time. So I do sell um, Streamlight products, but the ones I choose to put on the truck are from Coast because they have the edge in warranty processing and their pricing tends to be a bit better. I like Channel Lock because this stuff is made in the USA and it's very good quality and these are just a regular pair of strippers that we keep on the truck. They have a crimping end here for insulated and non-insulated connectors. They have five different size bolt cutters right there, those five holes. You may not have known what those are. A lot of guys don't. Those are size that you can thread a bolt in and then uh, squeeze the handles and it cuts, cuts the bolt. Try it if you have a pair that has that feature. And of course, then the, the stripper holes there. Lifetime warranty. I don't know that I've ever seen a broken one, but <clears throat> easy enough to swap out. I like Sonics for a lot of reasons. Their wrenches I am particularly fond of because they're very affordable and they're very good quality. I have one technician who needed a set of flare nut wrenches or line wrenches, as some folks call them. <clears throat> and Sonics has a standard and metric set in one roll-up pouch. And half the set is the standard have to set the metric, a different size on each end of the wrench. I wish I took this out of the package. I'll take this out of the package. Vim has a lot of really cool tools. I really do like their product line. I've read comments on some of my videos that people say, hey, I should carry Vim. And I do, I guess I don't do a good enough job of touting them. So let me tout them. One of their more popular tools is their 15 inch long wrench extender. Comfort grip handle. And you put your wrench in here and then you get this much more leverage using your wrench. 
And you may be one of those people who are thinking, well, why don't I just put the open end of another wrench in the box end of the wrench that I'm using? Because that is dangerous. Please don't do that. Um, those do slip and you can get very hurt. And I would rather you didn't do that because I like you too much. The wrench extender cannot slip. And for the $75 out of costs, that's a good health insurance policy if you ask me. <clears throat> and, you know, you're not rednecking it. <laughs> you're using a purpose-built tool. So while there is an attraction to saving yourself a few bucks because you already have an old school way of doing something, just know that there's a better way. Um, just because something might be the way you've always done it doesn't mean it's the best way. And this tool here is going to give you a more refined way of performing your job. Oh good, I'm dying to get these back in. It always hurts when I don't have these on the truck. This is a 208 piece master bit set from SunX. All manner of bits are in here. You have the longer, I think there's a better picture on the back. You have longer bits of Phillips flathead Torx hex, and you have nut setter bits there, and then a whole array of short bits. These are all the hex shank quick connect bits, so you can put them in a driver and use them that way. And there's an extension that is included in this kit. For the money, it, it's the most comprehensive kit that I know of. You get one of these kits in uh, like a quarter inch power driver, like an M12 one from Milwaukee. There's, you feel very powerful. You feel like there's nothing you can't do because you can tackle every tiny job and you'll be using a tool that's small enough to get up under dashboards, get in tight spots in an engine compartment. If you're using it at home, there are endless reasons for you to use a tool combination like that in your house. I use them all the time uh, when I'm, you know, on our on on the on the air tool repair bench. You've seen me use a Dewalt driver with these bits in in some of those videos. Use them for everything, and a small investment of a comprehensive bit set like this with a really good power driver like the Milwaukee M12, and you can go a long, long way. Jeez Louise, I forgot I ordered these. These things have been on back order forever. These are a set of heavy duty scissors from Mueller Cubes. I have not seen these before in real life. This is the first time I got to check them out. And I ordered the, I don't know when I ordered these, but they just showed up. Spring-loaded handle, and there is, you can see the notch. Can you see that? Mm, I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, right there. See the notch in the blade for cutting cable. So that's just so the cable doesn't slide out on you. That holds it. And I was curious to get these on because I think Matco was selling these and, and some guys were asking me about them if I had a, a competing product for it. And I looked it up and found these are in fact the exact ones that Matco has is branded with their name on it. So I'm happy to get these and we'll see how popular they are. I've also had the Vampire, or the Vampire Tool um, utility scissors and those have been a very good seller. So we'll see how, how these do on the truck next to those. It's nice to give people a choice. That to me is one of the advantages that I enjoy as an independent tool dealer is, you know, you go on the Maco, well, Maco not so much anymore, but if you go on you know, a Snap-on truck, for example, well, you have your choice of any brand you want as long as it's Snap-on. Unless they're selling some third party thing, which they can do but you're limited. This way I'm not limited. I can offer the vampire ones and the Mueller ones and 
lots of other brands of utility scissors if it's something that you're looking for. And then you can choose based on price, warranty, color preference, whatever drives your decision. Uh, you can you can choose different options, and I think that's the way shopping should be. Oh, good. I'm stoked to get these in. This is another tool that I haven't had on the truck in a long time. These are the hammerless punches and chisels. Mayhew manufactures these. And you have seen these on the Mac, in the Mac-O trucks. And the principle of these is very simple. This is a punch. You put the, the tip on what it is you're looking to put your divot in. And then this is just a spring. You pull this back and let it go. And then this impacts the surface of your workpiece and creates your divot. It also has a little chisel. See? So you can chisel away at something. And the, far, the farther back you pull, the harder it's going to strike. And what I like about these, when you compare it to just a regular spring-loaded punch is, you can control how hard these things punch. And you can't do that with a regular automatic spring-loaded punch, the ones you push in, because you push them and then the tip just hits by itself. But these are much more controllable. I think even though they're entirely manual, I th they're, they're a little more refined. And I like the fact that you get some control out of these. And they're made from Mayhew, which I'm a big fan of these guys. Uh, Mayhew makes a lot of their stuff right here in the U.S. And these are among those things. And I really like their pry bars. And I like a really good pair of heavy-duty screwdrivers Mayhew makes. We sell their picks all the time. They have great miniature hooks and picks. And they have a longer... O-ring pick set with the with the spoon ends on them. Great set. So Mayhew, love your stuff. Love that you manufacture in the U.S. And I'd be happy to put these on the truck. Every tool truck that services diesel shops needs to keep a couple of these. Half inch drive, inch and five sixteenths deep impact sockets because, say it with me, you use these for the wheels. And every guy who works on trucks is going to need that socket. It's equivalent to the 33 millimeter. If you don't have the standard, you can get the metric or vice versa. They're both the same size. They both work equally well. And in my experience, the SunX ones tend to last longer than other brands. So they're the ones I gravitate toward. I have seen Cornwell ones that have split right down the middle. Like, I mean, like you took it to a bandsaw. Very clean, right down the middle, in, per, in two perfect halves. That's very dangerous for an impact socket because the way an impact socket should break is you sh it, a crack should form and maybe a little flap will peel off. This is supposed to be a chromoly alloy as opposed to the more brittle chrome vanadium alloy that they make chrome sockets out of. There are some companies that will give you a black nitride coated socket that's made out of chrome vanadium. So make sure you look to see what alloys your black sockets are. You may think because they're black, they're impact. That's not the case. It's the alloy that matters, not the color. So always make sure of what you're buying. Uh, it's kind of a dirty trick for a company to sell a pair of, or a set rather, of black sockets, leading you to believe it's impact grade when it's not. Because when it shatters like that, things fly apart, and that's when people get hurt. And I've seen that happen with a multitude of Cornwell sockets this size. And I think Cornwell makes them themselves in their foundry, so they obviously have some kind of issue with their heat treatment or their tempering of the socket because impact sockets should not break like that or they're making them out of a different alloy. I don't know what it is, but Cornwell needs to fix that problem because it is a problem. What I've seen people do is they've asked me to 
swap out their cornwall sockets for these because they like these better and when these do break and they all they're all going to break because you're getting a lot of cycles on them a lot of heating and cooling cycles and a lot of impacting cycles they're going to break and when they do you want them to break properly and minimize the risk to injury chromoly alloys tend to be a little more what they call ductile they have higher ductility which means they're a little more malleable. They shrink and expand better under the stresses of impact applications, both with heat and the hammering action from the impact tool. <clears throat> so when they break, they break kind of softer, if you will. They don't shatter and fly apart. At least they shouldn't. And if they do, something's wrong. Uh. Gear Ranch has a six-piece plier set. Very good pliers. I sell a lot of these sets, no complaints. I don't know that I've ever seen a broken one that I remember. Anyway, they've got needle nose, diagonal cutters, Lyman's pliers, a couple of pairs of tongue and groove pliers, and they, uh, they have little holes in the handles for tethers. If you have an application, let's say you have to work uh, up in the air or you're on scaffolding or you work, uh, say, up on, work on power lines or even up on windmills, and you can't afford to drop a tool, use the lanyard holes for your lan lanyard and tie them in. And they have nice strong jaws, comfortable grips. The cool thing about these is they have a, a section on the handle here. You can see they're, they're uh, concave and they have little teeth in them, but that's part of the rubber handle. And they do that so you get a non-marring soft grip feature on there where you can, you can work a bolt or a nut uh, without worrying about damaging the, the uh, finish, which is kind of cool. I don't see that, I don't think I've seen that on any other pair, but they've got it all on, on all six pairs. I usually buy the green version of this to put in stock because if it's green, it sells, but Power Probe is out of the green ones right now. So they had this fire one, fire. So it's just kind of a cool flame motif they got going. This is a Power Probe 3. This is the basic power probe that everyone should have. And if you don't, I suggest that at some point in your career, probably after your first or second year, if you're new and you start doing more diagnostic work, invest in a power probe three because it will greatly shorten your ability to troubleshoot a problem. You can check voltage with these and you see the readout in voltage on the display. You can check for ground you can inject power to test to see if you can activate a particular system that's in question. Like let's say the window actuator isn't working and you don't know why. You can hook one end up to your power source, which would be the car battery, and then take the probe end to the window motor and touch the contact, hit the button, and it'll inject 12 volts of power. If the window goes up and the motor works, you know that that's not the problem. So then you can just trace back to the next connector down downstream and see if that activates the window. And you go until it, you don't see the window activate more and there's your problem spot. You can check relays with it, you can check fuses with it. You do a bunch of work with this thing, both in the car and on the bench. So for the relatively small investment, I think these are $149 right now, it's well worth the time that it will save you in troubleshooting things. You can even remove the probe here and buy a little step down adapter that you then plug into the tool and they take the probe and you plug it into the adapter. That steps down the output voltage to five volts. So instead of injecting 12 volts of power, you're injecting five, which means you're not going to fry the computer subsystems in some cars. So understand that, know how to use this because you can do damage that's gonna cost you a lot of money if you're not careful. So make sure that you educate yourself on how to use one of these. And when you do, I think you'll find that it's something you're really going to want to have in your toolbox. Oh, I saw the snot out of this thing. Sonix has this great quarter drive bit set. It has a ratchet in there, a small selection of Phillips slotted um, Torx tamper-proof Torx and hex bits, and there's also a small extension up here with a magnetic uh, bit holder in the ratchet. This guy's like 60 bucks, 
and it sells all the time. Very handy, great thing to keep in your car or to keep in your cart if you're at work using it in the shop. Gets you out of a lot of jams. Tell me that there's a better value in a four-piece lady foot pry bar set than the one from K-Tool. I challenge you. I don't know that you can. This thing costs 65 bucks and it has four pieces, the 6, the 12, 16, and the 20 inch. Price out the 6 inch alone on the snap-on truck and tell me how much it costs. I'll wait. Kidding, I'm not going to wait because I know how much it costs. This one, the, the 6 inch one alone, costs about as much as this whole set. And these are just, you know, hardened steel pry bars. They're built the same as everyone else's. Save yourself a ton of money. And, uh, and, and, and consider the K-Tool one, there's other brands too, but man, you want to save yourself some bucks and get a really good quality pry bar with lifetime warranty, this is the guy. Neck lights from Easy Red are in. The green ones are always popular, but I, they have them in red and orange. And you've seen some other videos where I've talked about these. Easy Red manufactures these four. Snap-on, Cornwell, Matco, and Caterpillar. So you'll see them under different brand names, but they're all the same light, and they all come out of the Easy Red factory. And if you're one of those people who doesn't believe me, check out this video up here, which shows you exactly what I mean. I have a video that talked about how I helped a person with a snap-on neck light. And he didn't know if I could get it repaired or replaced for him. When I called snap-on, they said, we don't, we don't make that, you gotta call Easy Red. So I did, and Easy Red said, it's not covered under warranty, but we're gonna help you out as a goodwill gesture, and they sent us one. In the Snap-on packaging, branded for Snap-on, came from Easy Red, gave it to the customer, and he was very happy. And it just illustrates how third-party branding works. Lots of companies make things for other companies. Snap-on, Maco, Cornwell, Mac, all the tool trucks have tools that are branded for them that are made by somebody else. This is a replacement double-ended spline drive wrench. These are very popular. There's a bunch of different brands of these. You've seen them under the Platinum brand when Mac used to sell that brand that they got from a company called Medco. They have since changed their supplier to the same supplier I use, ISN. So you'll see them under the Mountain name, the K-Tool name. Uh, who else has a Matco has the same wrench. It's and you just, so you've seen them under the Matco name. You've seen them under lots of different names. Uh, the pricing is way more in the Matco truck. I think last I was told by a customer, he has a five-piece set of these, and the Matco guy wanted almost five hundred dollars for the set. Uh, you can get the same K-Tool set of five of these on my truck for two thirty-five. So it's a significant difference. It pays to shop around. So when you jump on another truck, if there's something you're interested in and you don't need it right away, take down some information and shop it. And if you have a knowledgeable tool guy who can answer questions for you about who in fact manufactures a product and where else you might be able to get it and maybe save yourself some money and get the same warranty and maybe another thing you look at as level of service after the sale and all the rest of that, you can use that to make your to make a better buying decision for yourself. So be patient. Don't rush into anything. I'm stoked to get this. This is a replacement module for the Power Probe modular lighting system. Four of these come in the module, uh, rather in the package. Four of these go in a base unit. I've done a breakout video on those, so you can click up there to look at that. These are cool because uh, each individual module has own has its own uh, power button, and it has a hook and a magnet, and you can have up to four of these. 
um, in or out of your base unit. You can take one or two out and use the base unit or don't use them or any combination thereof. And then when you put them back in the base unit, that's when they charge. I had a customer who lost one of the modules. He wanted to know if he could get it replaced. And the answer is yes, but we had to wait a long time because this isn't something that my distributor typically carries as an individual piece from Power Probe. But Power Probe will occasionally uh, distribute them to the distributor so they can, they can sell them to guys like me who can then sell them to our customers. So that's, you know, it took a while, but we finally got it. Oh, this is a, a Mako chisel retainer for an air tool, helping a customer out with warranty on that. Thank you, Mako. And just some other small, uh, either um, warranty items or some bits and air tool chisels and air hammer chisels, rather. Some stuff in there. Nothing to go bragging about. This was an interesting challenge. I had a customer who made his own, I don't know what he uses it for. He told me I forget. So he puts an air fitting on this one end. He's got a ball valve here and he had a hose that, ignore this other one for a second. He had a hose that is a type of hose you would normally see on a tire inflator. So he said, the hose cracked, can I get him a new one? And I, I said, yeah, sure, no problem. Until I looked at it and realized I have no idea what hose uses the thread pitches that are on both sides of this? On the one end is, hang on, I wrote it down, is a one half 18, and the other end is a 3 eighths 24. You don't normally see that configuration on hoses for tire inflators. You usually see the 3 eighths 24 on both ends. So I had to find one that had the half inch and the three eighths with the correct thread pitch. It took me a while to find a supplier, but I finally found one. So now I can replace the hose. It's like a, I don't know, like a $15 item. Um, so I was, I was ha happy to be able to get that done for him. It took a while, but I found it. And what I really feel best about is when people ask me to do things like that for them. I'll take the burden off of them. It's, you know, it might take a while to find it, but we'll get it done. And I like being able to do that for people because A, they trust me to do it, and B, it's how I'm useful. This business is about more than just selling tools. It's about being helpful and useful and providing service and doing things for people that they can't be bothered with doing themselves. It means I do all the little things and all the detail-oriented things that allow you and guys like you to focus on all the details of their job instead of having to deal with the details of their tools. So I like being able to do that and it's you know how we provide a competitive advantage. And there's gonna be some other things that I'll be shooting some videos on that highlight that. And I think you're going to be very interested in seeing a video on my restoration or rehabilitation of a Snap-on Gold Metal Edition toolbox that was built, I believe, in the mid-90s. I'm rehabbing one, and I just ordered some parts for it. I'm waiting for those to come in. And when that's all done, it's going to look spectacular because the paint's in pretty good shape. It's going to polish it up. But we've got to replace some drawer slides and some uh, gas springs for the top and re-key the locks and a bunch of other things. So be on the lookout for that video because it's going to be full of tons of information and if you really enjoy vintage snap-on toolboxes it's going to be a video you don't want to miss so do me a favor and click down here now to subscribe so that you don't miss any of it thank you so much for watching and remember use a tool don't be one <laughs>